So they say, if you can't please everyone, then you've pleased no one. I am going to be reading and responding to some of my meanest questions and comments. This video is meant to emphasize the fact that no matter what you do, be that YouTube or trading, you're going to get criticism. But it's important to understand the difference between good criticism, criticism that actually helps you grow, and bad criticism, criticism that's just meant to hurt you. And I do want to emphasize the fact that this video is in good fun, so no hard feelings if you were one of the commenters that I posted in this video. Now just as a disclaimer, Charlie is a big boy. He's not upset by mean comments. <laughs> Caitlin says, this channel is literally the biggest joke since I got fired from my job because I was too good at it. Well, I'm sorry that you're too good to hold down a job, Caitlin. May I recommend Zip Trader U? Harvey says, how long until Charlie is in prison? Yes. Yes, I should be in prison. In prison for having too ravishing a like button. Make sure to hit that ravishing like button if you haven't already. Okay, Mr. Crop says, shut up and tell me what the stocks are. Jesus. Dude, bunch of talking about nothing for five minutes. Okay, so every Sunday I put out a top stocks watch list with all the top opportunities that I see value in based on a certain set of criteria that I talk about in all of my other videos. At the beginning of each and every single video, I talk about some of the ways that you can manage your risk. I spend a few minutes in the beginning going over how to manage your risk, why you need to have a trading plan, and why you're stupid if you forget to do either of these two things. This is just too much because that means that you actually have to put work in and you can't just randomly buy in to a pic that you saw on the internet with some guy with a blue shirt. Unfortunately, folks, life is really just a game of gnomes. And if you don't put work in, you're not going to get the gnome reward. But anyways, this is a good learning lesson because it shows that you need to put work in if you want to have a good time in the stock market. But of course, the true gentleman I am, I decided to respond professionally, politely, and helpfully. At night, I dress up as a platypus and fight crime. Okay, Tamatha says, My dog had to be put down for being rabid. The insensitivity on this channel is unchecked. Just so unchecked. Well, I'm quite sorry to hear about your dog, Tamatha. However... I will not stop referring to stocks that just got beat down as having been beat down like rabid dogs because that's what happened. Okay, Douglas says, Ugh, you have a horrible voice and speaking pattern. But what? What are you talking about, Dougie? Daniel says, The market is overextended. Stop. So I get a ton of comments from folks who are like, Charlie, the market is overextended. Why do you keep talking about the stock market? Everyone should stay out. But the way that this actually works is that during the first few years of a recovery from a recession, people are still thinking that we're in a recession and people are like, oh, don't buy anything right now because we're still in a recession. And then once everyone declares that we're now in a bull market, all of a sudden what happens is people are like, oh no, we're overextended. We just got back from the recession and now we're overextended. And then that continues again until the next recession happens. And that happens the entire time. So if you have it in your mind that you're never going to do something because of your fear of a recession, you're just not going to have any opportunities to take advantage of because you're always in a period where you have a probability of the market tanking. That being said, it is almost irrelevant to worry about this as traders because we don't really need the price action to move upwards in order to make a profit. We could short stocks, we could buy put options, we could sell call options. There are a ton of different ways to profit as long as the price action is moving. The only time it gets hard to profit is when it's going flat, but even then there are opportunities. Madre says, didn't understand the video, but he's cute. Well, thank you, Madre. Rawr. Pino says, this guy's an idiot. I took your advice and put my whole check into one of the stocks you said, and I lost. So every now and then I get a comment similar to this. But the truth is that I make videos on opportunities that I see as valuable. However, my aim with this is never to tell you what to trade or for you to trade something that you're not comfortable trading. You need to understand exactly what it is that you're buying and exactly what the risks are. I spend a lot of time telling you exactly what the risks are and how to avoid them by buying in at confirmation and selling out at validation amongst, amongst many other things such as having a concrete trading plan. However, when I make these videos, I do realize there are some folks who are just going to randomly gamble on different tickers and just all of a sudden get upset with me. But that's sort of how this niche works and there's nothing really I can do about that and I do want to still provide you the valuable tips that I've been providing you so that's sort of how I handle this. The truth is there are more factors than that at play. First there's the factor that my analysis is wrong in terms of identifying an opportunity and my analyses are never perfect. Almost every single one has something wrong with it, right? 
But the goal is to have like a bucket. As traders, we're trying to find a bucket. We're building a bucket to catch as much rain as possible. And that's what the goal is with these opportunities. However, the first factor is error on my part. The second factor is error on your part. And the third factor is the random chance of the market. My suggestion to you is focus on your part, which is understanding how to develop a good trading mindset, understanding how to develop trading skills that mean that all of a sudden, if you think my analysis is wrong and you think the market's going against you, then you know better than to go into the position. You trade like a spoiled brat. Doesn't matter how bad the position, it can affect you if you don't trade it. That being said, this individual may have been trolling. He said... I just did what you told me and I lost my money. And then he said, I have to scoop chicken guts for 12 hours a day. But of course, chicken gut scooping is a big part of being a profitable trader. Okay, Tony says, use the money to get rid of the lisp. I don't know what you're talking about, Tony. Nathan says, why aren't you talking about all the money you accepted from marijuana promoters and Chinese business interests? So when we started ZipTrader back in September 2018, this was about the time where Tilray and Aor Cannabis and all those other marijuana companies were really popping in the stock market. They were huge hype sectors at the time. So naturally at the time, I talked a lot about marijuana stocks because that's what people wanted to hear and that's sort of where I was focused on personally. However, because I was talking so much about that, I started getting accusations of like people saying that, oh, well, you're paid to promote these companies. But of course, that was not true. I've never been paid to promote any company. The only company that I have an affiliation with is, you know, my own ZipTrader U and, and my favorite free broker, Weeble, two free stocks if you sign up below. But those are the only two companies that I have affiliations with. I've never taken money for promoting some weird marijuana company or anything like that. I just always analyze it from my point of view and sort of give you an idea of what it is that I'm looking for. But the internet being the internet, even from 1,000 subscribers, people were already accusing me of stuff like this. So, you know, that, that's just kind of how it goes. Okay, Kuthi Bomb says, please don't say ravishing anymore. I cringe every time. This is a ravishing comment, Kluthi Bomb. Victor the female says, Charlie looks like my iguana. Well, iguanas aren't uncool, Victor. Jerry Monroe or Jerry Monroe says, Zip Trader is ugly. IDK, why he gets a good rep. Lol. Jerry, I really think that the answer to your question there comes from my insane charm. Marlene says, What I don't get about day traders is why share your strategies if they are so successful. So first off, I'm not really a day trader. I'm more of an omni trader. That means I take advantage of many different opportunities. I never place an artificial time span on a trade if it continues to have elevating factors. There are certain types of opportunities like with leverage ETFs that I don't recommend holding overnight. And of course with many penny stocks as well, but it really depends on the opportunity. And the second question here is why share my strategy? Well, this sort of coincides with this weird misconception that a lot of people have is that there's sort of like, some secret strategy or some secret key to the stock market and then the more people you give it to the less it works or something of that nature but the truth is that most strategies just get you to the same result and that is identifying opportunities but the key is actually identifying those opportunities right how can you actually apply the strategy to the real market and the real market conditions in order to get a consistent profit but it's also how can i find the opportunities to actually apply it to and that's why it's very important not just to have a clean and clear strategy that works over the long run, but also to understand how to execute it. Um, more so than that, a lot of people think that, you know, if I tell someone a strategy, that people are all of a sudden going to know it. But based on my experience, I found that very few people actually take the time to learn what it is that I'm saying. Like I always say, wait for confirmation. But a lot of people take that to mean, oh, just wait until the candlestick pops above the SMA line. But that's not it, right? There's many elevating factors that I talk about. You could have an oversold and increase and you could have a three bar play. You could have a high volume sentiment stock. There's tons of different things that you could have that bolster a good confirmation, but many people don't even bother to care about that. So what I try to do is with my videos, I try to take it from one step. I'm like, okay, well, what's the easiest thing that I can present that's going to ring in your mind? And I'll say, okay, wait for confirmation. And that's the first step at getting you to take better positions. But the goal of that is not to just get you to wait and blindly buy in at confirmation, but rather for you to learn that, okay, well, I know that this confirmation is helping me. How can I get better confirmation points? And they keep building from there. Buttery Skater says, you sound like a robot. Is it for legal reasons? Yes, Buttery Skater, I'm actually a Terminator. Zipinator. Lauren says, penny stocks are illegal. This is literally fraud. This was a comment on one of my top monthly penny stocks videos. So I'd say that this is one of the biggest criticism areas that I get, and that's on my top penny stocks videos because people are like, oh, well, penny stocks are scams. Don't you know that you can't trade penny stocks legally? Well, of course you could trade penny stocks legally, and penny stocks can be more open to scams than other types of stocks. 
but it really depends on which ones you're trading. When it comes to Zip Trader, I talk about penny stocks that are regulated on the regular exchanges. They're on the NYSC or they are on the NASDAQ. They're on big regulated exchanges. They may be at risk for being delisted, but they're still regulated at the moment. Secondly, these are all stocks that have drugs within the FDA approval process. A lot of them fail, and it doesn't matter that they fail because we trade off the pre-anticipatory run-up and the overreactions. But they do get quite a bad rap because many of them are below 50 cents and many of them have these like really weird sporadic movements that are caused by a lot of things that could be seen as manipulation or they are very susceptible to misleading press that can then cause them to be manipulated but my solution to this is to trade ones that aren't like five cents ten cents fifteen cents most of the penny stocks that i talk about aren't below a dollar i know it sounds misleading because penny stocks but in fact, actually any penny stock can be under $5. That's according to the SEC. I only recommend folks trade penny stocks if this is something that they have of interest to them and only if it's on a regulated exchange and it is attached to a clear catalyst. If it doesn't have those three things, I wouldn't trade them. So when you're saying that penny stocks are all scams, you have to look at it from a fact of like, okay, well, I'm trading this. It's above a dollar. It's regulated. There are opportunities here, but yes, most penny stocks do eventually go to zero. So you, you have to understand what the downfall is and what the risks are and understand how to hedge your position if you are wrong. Okay, folks, well, I do hope you found value in this video and that it was enjoyable for you. If this was a very fun video to make. Let me know in the comment section below which one you thought was the funniest or meanest comment. If you have any questions about whatever it is that we offer or anything that we do, make sure to comment below and I'll answer them all personally if you do it within the first 48 hours. We also have Zip Trader Circle and Zip Trader U in the links below to figure out more resources that are good for you and your growth as a trader. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.